So I've watched this video twice now, this Ray Dalio one. Yeah, uh, and yeah. So uh, we'll explain the chart in a second. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and uh, and we'll put it in the show notes, Danny. We'll put it in the show notes. Get people should watch this uh, long term debt cycle. It, it was fascinating for me yeah. just just to see it vi visually laid out. Um, but see, this is the, the chart you've got here is essentially. This is Lynn's chart too. Oh, it's this Lynn's chart. Yeah, so. Lynn made this chart. So, so for so people um, listening, there's like a it, it shows interest rates and the monetary base, and then what during the 30s to kind of like mid 40s. You can see where the Bretton Woods Agreement yeah. was back in the 40s, and the the blue line is the one that I'd tell people to focus on. So when you're looking at the blue line, and this is the 10 year Treasury, I believe. Uh, yeah, that's the ten, that's the ten year treasury. It peaked out in like sixteen percent or something like that in in the eighties. And so, what you're able to see with that is you can graphically see this eighty year cycle. Okay, and you can see how once those once those yields start getting compressed down to nothing, that's when things that's when your supply chains start to break, uh -huh. and they break because the cost of capital. Like people talk about price controls, mm -hmm. and they talk about how. Oh, you don't want to con control the price of corn because then that'll cause all these disruptions into the market, right? Well, when you talk about the cost of capital itself, which is the the yield that you get on money itself or on, on currency itself, that's the ultimate price control. That's you saying, I'm going to control the price of everything, everything. And they've been and with QE. That's that's what you're effectively doing. You're stepping into the market and say we should control like almost like uh, the genie in Aladdin. You know, you're like I'm controlling everything. And so here at the end, when you start getting down into those into those uh, nothing percent yields, you're going to get the supply chains to break because people d cannot perform economic calculation when there's no cost to borrow, where it's or even better yet, over in Europe, negative rates, or in Japan, negative rates. That makes no sense in nominal terms, not yeah. just in real time, in nominal terms. Like, how can't you think things aren't going to start breaking down in society when you're telling people, hey, give me $100 and I'll give you back 95 <laughs> right? And it's a, it's a deal for you. I'll lock it up for five years and I'll give you back less. That's how insane some of these academics with the MMT and all the other stuff, like they're they're off the rocker. Yeah, but at the same time, if you're holding cash and you're looking at high inflation and you are given that ability to maybe beat it by it being locked up, it might make sense to some people. Well, they're they're trading it. They're, yeah. Most of these most of these people managing these billion dollar bond tranches, and Greg Foss, you know, if he was sitting here, he could attest to it. Yeah. Is they are they are trading the Fed and they're trading whether the Fed are like, all right, they're going to have to step in. And when they step in, they're going to push these yields lower because they're going to become a buyer. They're going to be that QE buyer. And they're just they're 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 weighing the probabilities of their actions to make money on it. And that's it. They're not looking at it as like, I'm going to hold this thing through maturity at all. So. That's a challenge. So that's that's all I was really trying to show with this chart is I was telling people, you're in a long-term debt cycle. Here's uh -huh. the graphical proof where you can see it. Because you can say that and be like, oh, I don't believe that. But here's the chart that shows you that you're in this long-term debt cycle. When you look at those little, uh, when you see those jumps, yeah, that's your short-term uh, yeah. credit cycles yeah. that are playing out. And you can graphically see those. And then you can see this response with the monetary base. So go to the next slide, guys. Yeah. And um, so here's from 2008. You can see how they were able to manage all of this. And you can see the nice smooth line going into 2008. And that's when they started doing quantitative easing. Because of the crisis. Because yeah. of the financial crisis. But the, the weird thing is, at the time, that felt like a global financial crisis. And it was. Uh, yeah, and it was. Yeah. yeah. But the the increase in the base was at about about 1.2 trillion dollars yeah you can see you can see the move in 2008 and how big of a deal that was and then you can see how aggressive it has become since yeah. like the response on covid they have doubled that response just through um more qe that's been happening and, and i don't even think people realize that they have continued to do that insertion of this monetary base right so so people are listening prior to the 2008 crisis that looks about 900 billion on the fed balance sheet and it looks like it goes up to about one point 
Well, sorry, you've ten x yeah, 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 to about one point four trillion. Yeah, and then from two thousand and nine to about two thousand eighteen, it's gone up to four trillion, and and then in the space of a year, it's gone up to eight point nine trillion. <laughs> The the reason I put this slide in there was to show people. So this is what happened in the United States. But I think if you go to the next slide, I haven't looked at these enough. Hold on, just a question yeah. on this. Go back to a second, yeah. Danny. Like from your analysis of this, like it, it yeah. felt like everything that happened in two thousand eight, they had to do. It was kind of responsible, and they were able to protect the global economy from complete collapse. They were able to. Yeah. Uh, rescue like um, like in the UK, they were able to rescue Royal Bank of Scotland and Lloyd's, and uh, over here it was Fannie Mae, Fannie Mac, is yeah, that it? Yeah. And, and was it? There was a few that were, were able to Bear be rescued. Stearns, yeah, Bear yeah. Stearns were able to be rescued, and, and that that seems like a sensible plan. They pr rescued the economy. I would, I would, I don't know if I would use the word sensible. I would say they, it, uh, it was. They had to do it. Yeah. If you were in the seat, if I was in the seat, if Danny was in the seat, anybody was in the seat, they would have had to have done something similar. Now, whether they chose the magnitude that was like the magnitude of that reaction was a mathematical decision. I I, I would like to think okay. that they're saying, hey, we had this much liquidity, you know, explode, uh, impaired. And so therefore we need this much of a response. So they inserted into the market and each one of these, each one of these jumps are mathematical decisions that they're having to make and, and estimate like the, the the credit was impaired this many trillions now and this is how much we have to respond with. So what happened uh, apart from 2000 apart from it being Donald Trump what actually happened under that administration because that there's another big jump from 2012 essentially to 2015. So over in Europe you had a, a major crisis in that time frame and there was a big response okay. that that also happened. Okay. Yeah. And then and, and sorry Danny just, and then just looking what happened over COVID there's an increase from 4 trillion to essentially 9 trillion. Have you actually looked at what like, could it have been a three trillion or two trillion? Like, has it been massively irresponsible, or as, as, as the increase in the balance sheet essentially been th things that they would have to do selling that seat? I I I don't know the answer yeah. to that, Pete. I think that um, I think they have no idea what the right answer for any of this is. I think they just huh. know they have to put more units, more fiat units into the system to keep. Uh, social unrest from brewing more. And do you think the decision making is based on that, or do you think it's politically based to try and retain power? It's like, like they mm. do want to, like, it's, you know, it's not popular to allow things to unwind. It's not popular to not give people stimulus checks. It's not, like, it's, you know. I think it's just the, the, the desire for stability. Right. Okay. Right. If you're playing the game, yeah. if you're playing the Monopoly game and you're crushing the three of us, right? The last thing you want is for us to stand up and say, we're not playing this game anymore. Throw the board of the table. That's right. You've got to just, you got to keep giving us stimulus so that we continue to play the game. Because if we stand up and quit playing, like you got a real issue on your hands in this world where you own everything. Yeah. Huh. So I think they're just looking at it, not from necessarily, I mean, it is control, but it's more a desire to, to, protect what it is you have and keep stability in the system. Danny. Which is control. I mean, I, I yeah, don't want to mince words, but I, I... I was just thinking, so if you look at after 2008, um, there's a little dip in their um, balance sheet. I, I guess that's maybe like 10, 20% or something like that, yeah. where they've reduced the balance sheet. They're obviously trying to do that again now. Do you think they get another 10, 20% dip and it goes up again? Or Do I think like, they can take a trillion out... Uh, like clearly it wasn't oh, sustainable. No. There. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think you're going to get there. But at some point, person, either they've got to unwind this, or they keep going. But if they keep going, it's like we enter full Weimar territory. Oh yeah, that's where this is going. So you do, you you oh, yeah. think we're going? Oh god, yeah. That's not even hard. And how does it? <laughs> Okay, fine. And I don't want to. And I <laughs> yeah. don't want to sound like you know like death and destruction, but like this is a math problem. Right, this is just math. Like they can't take that out. Like looking at looking at everything that that's about to go down in in my opinion in the coming two to four quarters, coming like the coming year to year and a or a half a year, like things are about to to get insane. 
So they're talking, and, and the reason they're talking about like, oh, we're going to tighten, we're going to reduce the balance sheet. They're doing that because they have to, they have to get inflation under control. But they're at such a they're 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 cornered into the room so so far that I just don't know how they could possibly do that based on the inflation that's there, the current existing rates, the other countries that are getting clobbered with dollar denominated debt and need easing on the dollar. Uh, I just don't know how that can happen. Just go back one chart, Dan. It's Danny. Sorry. So looking at the previous chart where there was a massive increase in the monetary base, it was it was reduced from the 50s to the 80s. The red line, yeah? Oh, so yeah, so you're talking about in the previous yeah. period of so time. Do you think this will just match it? We'll have a massive no. rise in. Oh, you and don't. here's here's what I think is very different about back then to now. Okay, is back then you had people, you had a society and a culture that understood why it was important to be financially responsible. Huh, okay. Now, and this is on a global scale. This just isn't a U.S. dynamic. Culturally, you got people that are where the hell's my handout? Where the hell's the thousand dollars or the four thousand dollars that I need mailed to me? What what in the world are they doing to help me with my gas prices? I need some type of gas credit, right? People aren't saying, well, we need to let the free market, the free and open financial markets, figure this out. And if the cost of gas is nine dollars, well, so well, you better start driving less. Like, ain't nobody on this planet saying those things right now, right? So you got a you got a completely different cultural dynamic of financial responsibility, and and think about it, if we just watched for the last decade, the central banker step in and hand Pete a bunch of money, with QE, right, and and Pete go oh hey thanks and I'll have that final property that you hold Danny and Preston I'll have your last final property I'll gobble those up and now you literally own all the equity on the board and we own nothing and we'll be happy according to the WEF. Huh. Um nobody and that's why you're seeing that culturally manifest itself where people are so frustrated that they're they're all at each other th each other's throats because they own nothing. They're in debt up to their eyeballs and they're not happy. And they're not happy. Because they're, think about it, what's a slave? It's a person who owns nothing and has an, is indebted to make payments with their time and energy to another person and can't do anything. 